Hi guys, it's October here. Um, your Tuesday's host for Planet Pathlings. Sorry, my video is a bit late. Um, I'm putting it up this morning due to a few things I had to take care of last night, and I didn't get the chance to put the video up at all now. Um, so this is about um, writing your own rituals and you know what you do and how you prep and everything like that. So I wanted to share a couple of things with you. Um, I think um, that um, Spin or Sasha um, kind of went over the general pinpoints that she um, incorporates possibly into her um, rituals or organising rituals etc. So I wanted to share a couple of things that I do. Now I do not do many full on rituals at all and I have not, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say I've had loads of experience because I haven't. Um, so um, I'm just going to go over some of the things that I do. Um, they're very um, easy to do. Um, it's just something that I felt compelled to do. And it actually stemmed from um, when I was going away from the home to do a little ritual which was at um, Greyfriars Kirkyard in Edinburgh and because of the nature of the location and the um, things that have gone on there I decided to take some protection with me as well as before I left which was to use what I'm about to show you. This is a little bottle here, it's a little roll on bottle, I'll show you what I mean. It's a little roll-on bottle. Now this has got protective um, items in it. I have got salt and I have got angelica root and I also put in um, some lavender, lavender to keep you know everything calm and stuff like that. <clears throat> so this is a little roll-on. Some people use it for perfumes and things and what I thought this would be good for would be protection on the go. <coughs> um, so uh, what I do now is um, before any spell workings or any rituals um, I will have a cleansing shower or a cleansing bath. Usually I used to have a bath before I did rituals but what I've found better now is I will have a cleansing a shower and that way I can dispel everything down the plug hole um, <clears throat> then I find that um, having a bath um, sort of afterwards later on afterwards um, it helps to relax me and bring me back down um, so showering pre-ritual and bathing somewhat after um, I don't have my bath straight away, I will um, take care of everyday things etc and then um, later on that um, evening if it's evening um, or if it's um, maybe in the morning I do it I'll maybe then have a bath maybe a few hours later on down the line like maybe at tea time or something like that and there will be lots of um, cleansing and um, relaxation um, little bits and pieces in the bath um, sometimes I have a little muslin bag and I put items in that hang it over the um, tap and let that run into the water or use a little tea ball type thing um, so that's what I do with regards to um, certain uh, ritual uh, routines. Another thing I do is I use this a lot. Now this is used a lot for um, magic that I may be doing at certain times within the month, for example, um, different moon phases etc. Um, now I do little nods to each one but predominantly um, I do a lot of dark and new moon workings. 
Um, also, I do a lot of um, dark moon and new moon workings and um, little things connected in with Morrigan at this time. Um, you know, a lot of thanks and offerings, etc. But this is what I use when I'm doing um, a lot of my moon magic. Um, so these can be changed out. For example, if I was going to be doing um, something uh, directly connected with the dark moon, these candles, these tea lights would all be black. And as I was going into the new moon, I would um, change out these. Well, they would be black if it was the dark moon. I would change them into every day that passed. Um, going into the new moon, they would be changed out for white. Um, so that's another little thing I do. This is my altar um, where I don't really have any tea lights or anything on it at the moment. I'm waiting on some today. Um, but uh, my dailies are something I do. I basically get up in the morning and I do my dailies, which is to light my tea lights up here. And I've got a few things I light on here. And then this is my Morrigan Sacred Fireplace. I will do offerings every day, which is tea lights. And it used to be incense, but I can't burn incense at the moment because I've got new, the landlords put new smoke detectors in, which are very sensitive. So I have to use oils or scented candles or whatever to um, try and replicate uh, what I would have done with, before, which is my incense offerings. Now, this book here is, some, is my go-to, but when I first received this book, uh, which I got um, as a late Yule Christmas, Yule Christmas kind of gift a couple of years back, um, I used to kind of go by the letter by what was in this book regards certain things. Um, <clears throat> so now I kind of make things my own, um, as in... Um, I use things in this book to guide me and then I write my own items out, my own offerings or spells or um, things like that. The only thing that I kind of still use in this book that's to the letter that's within this book itself is my to the, the tool blessing that's in here. And that's because I've not had the chance yet to um, properly sit down and write my own one out. I do a lot of things off the cuff um, when it comes to writing um, spells or rituals or offerings or anything like that, even things to do with the elements, um, but uh, I've not had the chance to sit down and do that properly regards a tool blessing, so I use the tool blessing as is in this book, but I would advise, obviously um, when you have a book like this, it's a good go-to um, to sort of get you on the right path and regards um, what you want to say, depending what it is you're doing. But as time goes on, you learn to um, take guidance from whatever book it is you're looking at and then uh, write your own blessing or spell or ritual or offering words uh, as time goes on. So that's what I do. I mean gradually you learn to um, to write your own things down and put your own spin on things. I mean I like writing anyway um, so that comes quite natural to me but I would say that you know if writing is not your forte um, you could do other things, for example, um, if you're really good at drawing or painting, you could draw or paint something and use that as an offering um, to give thanks. Or um, if there's something you want to get across in words and you can't really get that across in words the way you want, again, draw or paint the thing you want to do and then write a few words. But the image itself can be the more prominent um, thing that you are using as a tool to get across what you want. This is a good thing about this path. You can make it your own. You can do what you feel resonates with you. For me, writing resonates with me. Um, but I do use art as in digital art. Um, 
um, I also have, <clears throat> which I mentioned in another video on this channel, can't remember which one it was now, um, I um, have a folder and um, as time goes on I'll see pictures online that I really like or that resonate with me and I will go ahead and print those off and if it's really jumping out at me for a reason sometimes I will print it off and automatically write something on it a phrase, um, um, a poem, words, um, a symbol, um, a rune or something like that that's jumping out at me at the time so um, sometimes it's handy to have something like a folder with pictures and everything in it because then you've got something for purpose really any time that you want to do something especially it's a certain thing you've got planned and you really really need a certain feel or um, you're going for a certain feel or maybe you're redoing your altar for a sabbat or a very special ritual or something like that you can then go into your folder and you can then pick <clears throat> things from your folder that jump out at you for that thing that you're going to be doing I mean, be as creative, as wacky and wild as you want. Um, like I say, for me, I just go with what resonates with me and I've always been drawn to the written word and the spoken word and so that's things that resonate with me. But I am very imagery drawn in regards to my practice and I've noticed that the last few years or so that I am using imagery a lot on my altars and um, a lot in my book of shadows and certain folders I have etc so I think that um, just incorporating all those little things can make a ritual or a spell or um, an offering even um, really come from the heart and be super duper individual um, you know what resonates with you might not resonate with another person and I think as well if you're working with a particular God or goddess or deity or or anything like that, then anything that comes from you as a creative thing, like something you've written, something you've drawn, something you've crafted, if you've make, made a candle even, that's another good thing to do. Um, you know, if for a ritual or um, an offering, especially I find for offerings is the more um, time and effort that you've put into something I think that that kind of um, speaks volumes in itself the, the, the fact that you've taken time to craft a candle or to make an item or to draw a piece of artwork or paint a piece of artwork or even digital art that I do which is um, by using certain programs on my computer um, it's all things you've taken time over and I find that those are very, very good for very particular offerings. Um, like for example, um, the dark moon is a big thing for me. And um, I have a folder which has got quite a lot of artwork in it, like I said, and um, quite a lot of times I will, that's my go-to. I'll go to that folder and I will pick certain things out and um, where the um, the little circle dishes um, that I showed you guys, there's a picture above it right now, but I don't always have that picture there. Sometimes I, because I've got a little hook sort of hanging above um, there that that picture's on, sometimes I will take that picture down and then for a particular um, time um, that's resonating with me, um, I will then pop another picture up that I might have from dark to new moon or if I'm doing a very specific thing at a very specific time I may be resonated and drawn to use a different piece of artwork which will then go up there and then once I'm done doing what I'm doing I will then replace that picture that's above it which is the the one you've seen I think I showed you in that image but um, in the, the little video at the, at the beginning that I showed you um, so you know just just do what resonates with you. Um, regards circle, um, casting a circle. Coffee, sorry, hang on. <clears throat> when I'm 
when I first started being hands on, I really felt, oh my gosh, I've got to cast a circle every single time. Now, many different witches have many different opinions on this. Um, my personal opinion is that you do what feels right to you. If you feel like you have to um, cast a circle every time you do something and that's what you feel within your heart of hearts and you're drawn to do that and compelled to do that, then by all means do that because if that's what you feel then it's right for you. The same as if you're the opposite, if you feel like you you know it's not resonating with you to cast a circle every single time then obviously go with that. I would say there is certain times where maybe casting a circle would be uh, more of a good idea than other things. Uh, for example there's been certain things I have done where I have cast a circle and I felt the need to, which I don't get often. So when I felt the need to do that, I followed my gut and I went with it and I did cast a circle. Um, but most times I don't um, and that's just how it is with me. So don't feel like you have to do that. Another thing as well is, apart from my ancestor altar, all my altars and sacred spaces are in my living room. So I have spots with it in the whole room that I can actually make my whole room like um, my circle, if you know what I mean. For example, I have um, a candle that I light on my altar and then I have a candle that I light on my sacred mug and fireplace which is um, to the right of me and my altar in front of me and then behind me I will light a candle on my windowsill there and then I have two candles that I light on my little bookshelf to the left. Um, so, um, you know, I um, kind of do it that way. Um, and then sometimes um, I'll have a, a, another candle that I use, like maybe my working candle. Uh, it depends on what I'm doing really. But I very, very rarely do do that. Um, the way this uh, house is located and where, how everything's facing, um, I have a south facing living room. <clears throat> so my altar is actually on the back wall. So if you want to go by the compass of how the, the room is situated, my living room is, my living room window is south facing. Um, but my altar's sitting on the back wall, which it kind of points more really direct north. Um, so then I'm kind of in a good place for um, the location of um, and the position of um, each direction. So it's very handy for me that I can turn my room into my circle very easily by doing that. Um, I have got a spare back room at the moment which I'm seriously considering making into a witchy room but we should see because um, it's quite handy when people stay to put a camp bed or something out in there and people can you know stay in there. I don't know yet. It's a possibility <clears throat> but um, I think that's a handy thing to be able to, if you've got a room where you can do that um, you know you're not having to <coughs> have everything lying around so it's easier for me because everything's already in the places that they would be other than the window ledge which is <coughs> I don't leave a candle on the window ledge I put a candle there if I'm going to do anything but all the other candles are where they you know and um, are in the living room if that makes sense so the Morgan sacred fireplace my altar um, my bookshelf all those have spots on it for candles anyway but it's just the, the window ledge that doesn't which is easy to rectify if I'm going to go down that route. Now, um, things have changed a little bit as how I go about things. Um, I I won't do ritual unless everything's just so. Um, spell workings, I like my altar to be clean and organised. Um, I don't know, I just feel that's should be to be honourable and stuff like that, especially with um, Morgan's spaces. So I tend to make sure they're just so, um, I like things just so, before I will go ahead and do any spell workings. 
and rituals things have to be even more just so um, before I'll go ahead and do anything like that um, but um, when I first moved into this house we had smoke detectors but they were the battery operated ones so um, if they started beeping for silly reasons then you could take the battery out and then put it back in again but um, since these new um, smoke detectors have been put in I'll show you what I mean since these have been put in which are super sensitive and I don't know whose idea it was to put one in the living room uh, anyway so I've got one there there's two in the downstairs hall uh, a heat sensor in the kitchen and another one of these up the top of the stairs now these are very sensitive and at first I was even scared to light candles in case they got set off because the guy was like I said what's the likelihood of in these <clears throat> my candle setting off the detectors as well it is possible so a few times when Ali was out on support I was testing things like how much you could get off with and I think because of where my altar is situated uh, my sacred fireplace and my little um, moon solar um, mini altar space um, they're away from the direct um, <clears throat> Uh, hit of the um, smoke detector so I can get off all my candles that I normally burn that I did burn before they went in the only thing I can't um, do I can't uh, burn, I can't smudge I can't do what I used to do which I used to have a little bowl with a mini cauldron in it and my um, little um, charcoal disc and then I had my usually used to use my bay protection blend and um, go around the house or go around the living room with that before I did anything but now I can't do that because it'll set them off and my son would freak out so um, I can't use them I can't use that method anymore <clears throat> so what I tend to do is um, like I say I use my little roll on for on me but I have I'll, I've made a little um, spritz bottle thing and that's what I do I go around the room with the little spritz bottle and do it that way it's got um, it does a similar thing but in, but instead of it being um, a burned um, way of cleansing the room it is a spritz form of cleansing the room um, that's the only way I can do it because that would go off and that would not be very good because my son is autistic and that would not go down very well with him he would freak out so that's what I do in regards um, the cleansing of the space if I'm doing a ritual as well like I say everything has to be just so so that means that um, if I'm wanting to do something and maybe I'm thinking about changing the altar around a little bit or you know changing the setup or whatever, I will do that. I will cleanse my altar and I will sort the setup and everything the way that I want it before I do anything. Um, same with my Morgan Sacred Fireplace. If I'm doing my altar, I do my Morgan Sacred Fireplace at the same time so they're both clean and uh, cleansed and um, as it as I want them to be before I go ahead and do anything but that's just me now um, I work with the Morgan and most more recently um, the kayak um, and with her I'm just gradually building up a um, relationship with her and getting her secret space sorted out and all that so I'm just really um, the, the little altar cupboard that I have started for her is nowhere near finished yet so I'm basically I've just got a candle somewhere lit for her at the moment that I use um, to honour her. Um, regards Morgan, um, I do my dailies but people seem to think that um, you know when you're doing rituals that you you always call upon your <coughs> your um, your god or your goddess Sometimes I don't, um, depends what it is I'm doing and sometimes I will not go to my Morgan altar and I will go upstairs to my ancestor altar and I will do things there and I call upon my ancestors, depends on what it is I'm doing. So um, some cases it's Morgan I call upon, um, sometimes um, it may be a certain aspect of her that I am um, I'm John to call upon. Um, other times, I may, like I say, I may go upstairs to my um, ancestor altar and I may call upon my ancestors. 
Um, I do my dailies uh, for more again on her um, altar, her seasonal and working altar, and also um, predominant offering scope on the sacred fireplace. And upstairs, it's the same. Um, and this is her altar. Certain things I will put on the altar as offerings and change it up, etc. And then the same thing goes if I'm going to them to ask of them something for their help or guidance. Again, I'm, I will be um, respectful in the fact that I will make sure that the altar is clean and cleansed and organised and, <clears throat> you know, um, all that kind of a thing before I go ahead and do anything. Regards offerings. Um, number one, I'm a witchy on a budget, so nothing is elaborate regards offerings. And a lot of offerings I do give now are either totally from nature, which means they are free and abundant. Um, if I do buy something, then it is not an expensive thing because I can't afford to. And um, I am more compelled to find a more cost-effective um, way of giving offerings. So um, a lot of times it's um, different kinds of water, it's sea water or it's spring water. Um, very much compelled and have a connection with sea water with regards more again that's just me. Um, <clears throat> also things like um, berries that I find in the forest like um, particular things at different times of the year are more prominent than others. <coughs> <clears throat> also, I find um, the different um, Celtic trees that are in the forefront at the time. Um, I find sometimes it's a nice thing to include um, something to do with that in the offering. So, for example, um, if uh, the Celtic tree that is in the forefront is maybe like Rowan, for example, um, I will then... Um, incorporate some rowan berries. Um, it's maybe um, uh, oak, I can't remember all the, um, off the top of my head, all the um, the Celtic tree names and, and ogums. Um, I have got the book in front of me, but um, you're in front of it, so I won't go raking in that just now. But um, So I use that also as a way of incorporating things into offerings. Uh, candles, making candles when I have the I always have wax in, but it's whether I've got anything else in that I can incorporate into uh, the candle. <clears throat> Sometimes I make, I'll make an oil um, and maybe anoint a candle with it as an offering that way. But I really do feel that um, the offerings that I choose to give are very um, specific and individual to me and things that I can afford to um, give. As you can see here, this is my little Celtic offering bowl that I got in a charity shop a few years ago and I'll share with you very quickly what's inside. As you can see here, um, I have a charm of a candle somebody made me. I have a feather. I have got some flowers. I have got an actual real um, arrowhead. I've got a real arrowhead. I've got um, a little bottle with things in it. I've got hair. I've got a few other things. I'm not going to dig everything out but that's the kind of things I, I give. Also this is a little offering vessel. There, at the moment there's only water in it um, but sometimes I'll put a little bit of wine in there or um, a few other things, depends what I have, um, but at the moment it's only water. So just to give you an idea, if I was doing ritual, okay, this is my Morrigan seasonal altar. So like I say, that is facing north. So then if we go round the room, you can see I've got candles there. And obviously that's Morgan's Sacred Fireplace, which I also incorporate. <clears throat> now this is my window. As you can see, my cat's trees in front of it. 
but I'll open those blinds and I'll put a candle there and then here you can see I've got my little dolls up there but I have two little holders it's got salt on it and I put a tea light and salt on it there and I put a tea light and I will move these dolls off because obviously I don't want them catching fire but that's where they go and then obviously we go all the way back round again to where the sacred fireplace is so you get an idea of how it could work also as you can see here this is my Morgan sacred fireplace so if we go along here and down that is my little um, mini altar thing that I use for uh, solar and lunar but predominantly lunar workings so you can see how the setup is in here so just make um, just make things work for you um, very individually for you and um, rituals are very very individual things and that's why I don't um, do a great load of them and haven't done a great load of them because I feel that for me anyway it takes me a long time to prepare and get organised and set up things the way I want it because my son's autistic and he's coming up and down the stairs all the time needing things and needing a hand um, sometimes I have to get everything just so and then when he goes to bed or when I wake up in the morning if I'm up before him then I can go ahead and do what I need to do and that way I know everything's just so and it's just a case of um, doing things. If you want to say how do them in order is once my altar and sacred um, fireplace are how I want them to be whether it's the same day or the next again day <clears throat> uh, I will uh, beforehand I'll have my shower and then I come down here and then I will spritz the room and then I will use this where's the camera and then I will use that bottle and what I do is I'll try and show you this it's quite hard to show you um, I'm going to do this hang on okay just say this table is my my skin I'll do this in certain parts of my body right so then I will draw for example just for talking's sake right so like just for example this I wouldn't draw that actual symbol but say for talking's sake that's what I wanted to draw and um, I would draw the symbol on me so on certain parts of my body um, also on my neck because I can't reach my own back and things like that um, so I would do it in certain parts of my body so I'm protected from the back and the front if that makes sense uh, <clears throat> so I have a few of these for different things but this one is what I use pre-ritual spells anything like that um, so that's pretty much um, what I'm trying to get at it's hard to explain but that's what I do anyway um, so you can incorporate anything you want into a bottle like this these are very inexpensive to get on Amazon and um, then just make them fill them with what you want to fill them with depending on what the purpose is for and uh, that's what I do so like I say I'm um, going do that um, and then I would um, if I'm not um, casting a circle then I will go ahead and um, read out um, what I have written down for whatever I'm doing um, that would also incorporate um, calling upon a deity or my ancestors if that was the case depending on what I was doing um, lighting my candles for a particular purpose um, doing what I need to do and then um, uh, I always finish with um, <coughs> um, 
I'll leave the candle, if it's for a particular thing, I'll leave the candle burning for however long it needs to be burning for or till it um, extinguishes itself, depending on what it is. Um, and then if I've, obviously if I've cast a circle, I will um, close the circle down. Um, and then I will um, thank uh, deity, god or goddess, ancestors, um, and bid them on their way. And then I will um, leave any offerings, uh, so um, food offerings or water or wine or whatever. And and then I will um, just give thanks. And a lot of times I sit for a few minutes um, uh, to get myself back in the right headspace. But also, um, especially I do this with Morgan and also for my ancestors to kind of it's a mark of like respect or honouring sort of so to speak um, so it's nothing elaborate and I haven't done it loads of times before um, regards to ritual but spell workings yes and offerings yes so anyway I hope this was helpful I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next week lots of love and blessed be bye